All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Battling 101 Basics. Today, we're going to be going over team preview. Now, it's a pretty long topic to cover, so I'm just going to be breaking this up into two parts. This first part is going to be focusing on general trends that people like to lead with and trying to counteract that. It's not going to be going over wind conditions and trying to find a general way of battling based on team preview more so than it is just talking about certain matchups and things to look out for. So number one is metagame knowledge is always important. If you don't know what to lead with, it's usually because you don't know enough about the metagame. So in this instance, like you can see here, you have to identify that you you have to identify your team's weaknesses first off. My team is pretty weak to Zard Y. Um, it's Mega Metagross, Ferrothor, and Scarflando. Slowbro, Thunderous, and Bisharp. And as you can see here, nothing can really take a Zard Y Fire Blast really well. So the worst lead I could like possibly do is Ferrothorn. And then you might be saying like, oh, yo, Ferrothorn, that's a very common lead. And it's pretty good at it because you can set up Stealth Rocks early game and then like pressure your opponent that way. But like if your opponent brings in something that like makes Ferrothorn complete setup fodder, and you have no like reliable response to it, then don't lead Ferrothorn even if you expect something else to be led with. Because leading is all about like guesswork, right? He could lead off with a lot of different things, really. He could lead off with like if this is Choice Band Azumarill, it's not a bad lead. If this is Stealth Rocks Tyranitar, not a bad lead. Stealth Rocks Ferrothorn, hey, Stealth Rocks Clefable. A lot of Stealth Rocks users, they're very common leads. You could also lead off with Ferrothorn, like who knows, maybe that could be Scarf and then he could try to get a surprise kill on me. So yeah, he could lead off with pretty much everything on his team. And if he leads off with Charizard, then I'm screwed because like, yeah, I'll switch to my Slowbro, right? He goes off for the Fire Blast, and yeah, I take a lot of damage from Fire Blast. Now, yeah, I could like switch out and get Regenerator back, but... Yeah, really, what am I going to switch to? He could definitely try and Fire Blast again, try to go for a high roll, or he could go for Solar Beam, but if he goes for Solar Beam, then my best switch would probably have to be, like, what, Thunderous? Because, like, if I switch into Metagross or Ferrothorn, he gets another Fire Blast on me again. So, I mean, it's either I stack something, or I have to predict correctly, saying that, okay, he's not going to play the Fire Blast role, he's going to go for the Solar Beam, try to switch my thunders that way and force him out that's not a very good way to start out so just because like your po your, your pokemon has stealth rocks doesn't mean you have to lead off with it all the time just uh keep in mind that like you always have to lead with something that like if you have an unfavorable matchup then your risk is minimized now in this instance my opponent is playing a volturn team now volturn is a very common team where like a lot of things could also be leads so scissor could be a lead rotom could be a lead i'm gonna say like judging based on how his team's built that's gonna be like stealth rock t-tran spikes chesna and then maybe uh specs or wish sylveon and then like it's a fog latias but i'd have to say the most common leads would be anything that has volt switch u-turn or like entry hazard so i'll say okay um most probable leads will be rotom wash because he can just Volt Switch out if he has an unfavorable matchup against, like, nothing really, because my team is really weak to Rotom Wash. His worst matchup is probably Clefable, so yeah, he's probably going to lead off with that. And then I can lead off with Heatran, right? And I'll say right off the bat that leading with the element of surprise is always one of the best ways to do it. It's one of the best instances to get, like, a surprise kill or get momentum really early. So using Surprise turn 1 is always a great option. This is a Power Herb Heatran, and this is one of the best ways to do it because, like, the way you bring it in, the way you lead with it, it makes your opponent think that, oh, okay, maybe this is Defensive Heatran, maybe this is, like, the Lava Plume Stealth Rocks uh, Protect set with Roar or Toxic or whatever. And then most Rotom Watches would be inclined to, like, Volt Switch or maybe, like, Hydro Pump or whatever. This gives me a great opportunity, you know? This gives me an opportunity to outspeed the heat, outspeed the Rotom Wash and hit him with the Solar Beam. Now, like, since I have Mega Metagross, I can, like, sweep his team a lot easier because, like, Rotom was pretty much his main response against Mega Metagross. So, again, leading and the element of surprise, they go, like, hand in hand. So, if you can get, like, the element of surprise off early game, then that's just great for you. And then you get the momentum, like, you get a huge swing of momentum early game. 
Now, another instance in terms of leading is dedicated leads, right? And the most common dedicated leads are usually on hyper offensive builds. Now, you can see here the way my Tutti's team is built. He has like five sweepers, and then he has a uh, Skarmory as its hazards, and then it's just gonna die. So, Custap Skarmory, one of the most common, commonly seen uh, suicide leads, and you'll usually see them being led off. And knowing this, you can always lead off with something that counteracts a suicide lead such as my Mew, for example, right? You can see that he really has nothing for Taunt or Will-O-Wisp. Like, if he chooses to stay in, then, like, I get a free turn. I get to, like, burn something for free. Or I can just burn something for free right off the bat if he stays in and tries to Stealth Rock. I mean, we can let him. We have the Fog Latias, right? So, yeah, even though, like, my Stealth Rock Scarchomp is pretty much my most common lead, that doesn't mean I always have to lead with it. I can lead with Mew knowing that he's going to lead with Skarmory since like Skarmory is one of the most common dedicated leads. And this is going back to the fact of knowing the metagame and just knowing like what's common, right? If you see a build, if you see a framework like this, you see like five frail ass sweepers and then you see a Skarmory, okay, then I'm gonna say that's Custap Skarm. It's a pretty safe assumption to make. So because I, you know, see this, I can just like taunt and will-o-wisp or do whatever. Now, in the same instance, if you're the one using the dedicated lead, you don't always have to lead with it. Most of the times, it's, you know, a good idea to, but you don't always have to lead with it. You know, knowing if your opponent is smart enough to identify Skarmory as a suicide lead, you can lead with something else. Like, if you think I'm going to lead with Mew, then you can lead with Keldeo. And even if I lead with something else, like, Garchomp is probably the most, the second most probable lead, and Scissor is also probable lead. You can lead off with Keldeo instead of your Skarmory, and then you can just bring in the Skarmory on, like, a double switch, or, like, if you predict an Earthquake or whatever. I mean, it's, it's not a bad idea, right? So you can lead off with a heavy hitter, predicting that your opponent is going to lead with something else and trying to counteract your suicide lead. So, just because you have a dedicated lead doesn't mean that you're always at a disadvantage in regards to, like, predictions and guesswork in terms of lead matchup. You can always use this knowledge to your advantage and you can lead with something else, taking advantage of the fact that your opponent knows that Skarmory is a dedicated lead. So, in this instance, this isn't very much of a dedicated lead, but it's, it kind of is, right? In this instance, you'll always see that Magic Balance users, such as Sableye, are very common leads, especially since, I said before, like, Stealth Rocks users, Entry Hazards users, they're one of the most common leads that people will like to run, simply because it establishes momentum early and it makes the best use of the entry hazards. If you get them up early game, then you get the most use out of your entry hazards because it forces your opponent to either take damage or to get them off the field. So in leading Sableye, and I'm using my uh, 2 T's team with like the Hyper Offense and the Cussap Skarm, so, in the same sense, like, if I lead with Skarmory, then I'm at a complete disadvantage, right? Because he has Prankster, Will-O-Wisp, Taunt, or, like, whatever the hell he's using. It's just a really bad option for me, right? Because, like, I have nothing to take a burn, as you can see, so... He gets a free burn, and then he establishes momentum early. And, since Keldeo is one of my best responses to Sableye, unless it gets, like, a Calm Mind up or two, then I'm gonna have a lot of tough times dealing with Mega Sableye now because just looking at his defensive team with like Ferrothorn and Gliscor and probably like defensive Heatran and Sableye, it's going to be very hard to break it if Sableye like right off the bat establishes its Mega and then allows like you can just Will-O-Wisp everything and you have no clear it for any form of recovery. But again, recognizing this is always a good thing to do. So, again, you don't always have to lead off with your dedicated lead, right? You can lead off with something else. So, in this instance, I'm going to be leading off with Diggersby. Now, let's just look at his team for a second. We can see that Diggersby and Lapunny put in a lot of work on this guy's team. Now, obviously, they can't, like, flat-out sweep him, but in a hyper-offensive build, you can just sack and destroy, right? That's the whole premise of the team. Just, like, sack something, just, like, go YOLO mode on this guy's team. Just like lay down the hurt and then die and then bring in something else and then they'll just finish the job for you. 
So in this instance, I recognize that he's going to lead with Sableye, so I'll lead with my Diggersby, right? I can lead with Diggersby, and then this is Long Swords Dance. If he led off with, like, Heatran or whatever, it still would have been a great matchup. Or, like, Gliscord, that would have been a great matchup too, so... I can just Swords Dance, like, twice. Like, he can burn me for all I care. And now I have the advantage. Like, he has to play Prediction Games in order to, like, survive against this Diggersby in order to wait out the turns, right? So I have the momentum, I have the strong hitter, and now his Gliscor and his Diggersby, I mean his Gliscor and his Sableye are weakened. So I mean, like, my my Lapani is Healing Wish, I could finish off my uh, opponent with Swords Dance Diggersby late game after I Healing Wish with Lapani. Or I can just like clean with Lapani after I like rack up some damage with like Nasty Pot Thunder, Specs Keldeo, or like Choice Ban Azumarill, right? So there are very many, there are a lot of options in order to gain momentum, and it's not always, you know, leading with a dedicated lead, getting the hazards up, like, even though that's like the game plan most of the time, it doesn't always have to be that way, it's a very fluid thing, leading. You can lead with different things, predicting, like, different various outcomes of the matches, you don't always have to lead with your entry hazards in order to maintain momentum, usually, you know, momentum can be just got by leading with a favorable matchup, a heavy hitter, and if it's an unfavorable matchup, then switch out. Okay, so just a quick refresher on what we did today. Uh, the first thing, and the most important thing, is to know the metagame whenever you're doing team preview, because there's really no way around it. You have to play the game on a consistent basis, or at least so you know what everything does, in order to make general assumptions about your opponent's team, in order to predict correctly like what your opponent's gonna do right you just gotta know the metagame there's no way around it and to another extent it's also knowing your team's weaknesses right knowing your team's weaknesses is very important because if there's un there's an unfavorable matchup with your team such as the uh ferrothorn and charizard y example like i could handle charizard y that team could handle it but if my ferrothorn was in on a charizard y i really have no way to switch in safely i'd have to sack something so know your team's weaknesses and plan accordingly whenever you lead with something. Just make sure that if your opponent leads with something else, that the circumstances won't be that bad depending on like how unfavorable the matchup is. Third, you have to recognize that people often lead with the momentum getting moves, as I explained before, stealth rocks, spikes, entry hazards in general, and then volt switch and u-turn because those minimize the unfavorable matchups because you can just switch out while maintaining some momentum by like knowing if your opponent's switching out or they staying in and you get free damage, right? So those are the most common momentum getting moves and recognizing this is very important in terms of choosing a lead. Now also dedicated leads, you have to recognize the dedicated leads. This ties into knowing the metagame. And just because they're dedicated leads, if you're the one using it, if you're the one using the custom Skarm or whatever, that doesn't mean you always have to lead with it 100% of the time. You can recognize that your opponent's probably going to lead off with something that's going to counter it, and then you can lead off with something else, knowing that your opponent knows that you're using a dedicated lead. And last but not least, you always have to recognize the fact that damage is momentum too. So, going off with the momentum getting moves, Stealth Rock, Spikes, uh, Volt Switch, U-Turn. You don't always have to lead with Pokemon that do that, even though they're usually very good options. Because damage is momentum too. You can always lead off with the Heavy Hitter. You can lead off with the Life Orb Gengar, Spex Keldeo, Zard Y, um, Mega Gardevoir, or whatever. If you think that your opponent's most probable momentum getting leads are going to have an unfavorable matchup against your Heavy Hitters. So, right, damage is momentum too. If you're putting your opponent in the spot where they have to switch, like turn one, and then take damage, then I'd say that's a pretty good lead and start for you. So, next month we're going to be going over um, team preview again, but focusing on win conditions and a general style of play based on, like, frameworks of your opponent's team. Um, this is Plus. Thanks for watching this episode of Battling 101 Basics. Don't forget to subscribe to the Smog on YouTube channel, to my channel, which will be linked somewhere down below. And I'll see you guys next month. Peace out.